Um, Senator Wesso, um, item four is Senator Wesso's bill, uh, which is 1035. Uh, Senator, you have the floor. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members, if you recall, in February, this committee held a joint oversight hearing with the Senate Committee on Energy Utilities and Communications Committee. I want to thank Chairman Bell for co-organizing that hearing with me. At that hearing, we heard from academic and industry experts who shared the findings of a recent National Academy's Transportation Research Board peer-reviewed comprehensive study on technology-enabled transportation services. Additionally, we heard from stakeholders including representatives from the various transportation services, livery, taxi, airport shuttles, ride-hailing services, as well as local and state regulators, CPUC Commissioner uh, Leanne Randolph, the San Francisco MTA, uh, City of San Jose, uh, San Francisco Airport, City of LA, and one and a half hours of public comment. All in all, the hearing shed light on the current challenges and opportunities with the ride-hailing ride disruption occurring in the market and raised more questions, perhaps, than it answered. I want to be clear. Uh, we all understand that these new ride-hailing services are popular, and we support transportation choices in the market. We must ensure we provide adequate public safety and consumer protection where it's merited. Why? Because just a year ago, the LA Times found that at least four men who were ticketed by the LA police while driving for one of these companies had criminal convictions that would have barred them from operating a traditional taxi service, including convictions of child exploitation, manslaughter, and identity theft. In August, district attorneys in Los Angeles and San Francisco filed amended complaints against the same company, citing 25 instances they found of California drivers for this company with criminal records. This month, the district attorneys and, and uh, the industry reached a settlement agreement of $25 million of a lawsuit focused on consumer protection and public safety, whereby the district attorneys accused the company of overstating its over its consumer safety policy and marketing materials. The company was originally claiming that it had the safest ride on the road and described its background checks as the gold standard. These are claims the company can no longer make and should have never made in the first place. Last month, BuzzFeed News conducted an investigation based on information from customer service representatives at ride hailing services which according to BuzzFeed was confirmed by other parties. The info showed search queries conducted on the ride hailing company's customer support platform from December 2012 to August 2015 that included the word sexual assault returned by 6,160 customers' support tickets. A search for the word rape returned 5,827 tickets. In response, Uber provided BuzzFeed with data that showed five claims of rape and 170 claims of sexual assault. What which one is true, currently there is no way of knowing. More recently, uh, the uh, city of LA sent the CPUC a letter requesting a pilot project on criminal background checks that would require fingerprint background checks. The CPUC declined. In a news story yesterday, a Sacramento family is taking action against another ride hailing company for the death of their 24-year-old son a year and a half ago. While the company has a $1 million insurance liability, the family is upset that the company is dragging its feet on taking financial responsibility. Of course, there are more stories. In our hearing, the CPUC encouraged the legislature's participation in this process. They said, we want to hear from the legislature. That's why I'm bringing this bill forward. I believe more needs to be done. I believe the public is currently at risk, and there is no way 
currently of the, the state to verify the claims that are being made by this industry. This bill, SB 1035, is a very sensible and common sense approach to begin to answer some of the many questions that were raised and address the concerns we heard of in that uh, oversight hearing. The general approach of this bill is an, acknowledge an acknowledgement of number one, the popularity of this, these new services and the consumer demand for safe transportation choices. Two, the CPUC authority to regulate and license these services that was codified by this very legislature. And three, the need to address public safety and consumer protections. In many instances, this bill directs the CPUC to study, assess, and make a determination on some of the concerns that have been raised and remain unsolved, including background checks. It requires the CPUC to work with the appropriate law enforcement agency to study the rigor of existing background checks and propose a background check requirement. Background checks that shall be assessed include biometric and name check uh, processes including criteria such as criminal offense, sex offender, sexual offense, fraud, etc. Excel ex accessibility for the disabled population. It establishes requirements to address needs for the disabled population by requiring the CPUC to study these issues as they relate to TNCs on this issue. <clears throat> on the Again, I, I welcome the opportunity to work with the chair who has been extremely uh, accommodating and the committee staff which uh, have worked with us uh, to recommend that language that would strengthen the bill in that area. Uh, this bill also addresses the status of unique insurance requirements. It adds details to the study required in the Bonilla bill that was approved by this legislature two years ago that uh, the CPUC with the Department of Insurance to better understand whether the unique insurance products are working. And as the uh, Sacramento family notes, we cannot assume, assume uh, the insurance issue is resolved. It is by far resolved, I believe, and I believe there's outstanding evidence out there that, assume, uh, that suggests that it's not an issue that we should turn our backs on. Data sharing, require the CPUC to establish proceedings to require data sharing of TNCs for local planning agency. I must be clear on this uh, issue. This bill maintains the current privacy protections of customer information. This bill also addresses a very notable and glaring hole in the CPUC's oversight, the need for enforcement. What good is having a rule if there's no one out there to enforcement? For enforce that rule. The CPUC currently has 22 staff statewide now, mind you, the size of the state of California, some of you have districts that are hard to traverse and to be accessible to constituents because they're so big. Imagine having 22 people in charge of the entire state of California providing regulatory oversight for over 180,000 different uh, uh, individuals and vehicles, over 180,000 different units who are unmarked, albeit. So while they may be out there, they really don't have a clue who these vehicles are. They have no way to identify them and no way to enforce the law. That's enforcing roughly uh, over 10,000 permits and licenses plus over 100 and 80,000 ride hailing vehicles on the roads today. The CPUC has had a total of 12. You must listen to this figure. A total of 12 sting inspections across the state last year. 12 for 180,000 vehicles operating on the road every day. It's critical we authorize the boots that are already on the ground to help enforce the CPUC regulation. This bill would require the CPUC to work with local law enforcement to enforce C CPUC rules. It authorizes peace officers to enforce charter party carrier CPUC rules, including those on TNCs. It requires the CPUC to adopt general order containing rules for TNCs. It extends law enforcement's ability to impound charter party carrier license violations. 
and additional this bill restates the CPUC's existing constitutional authority. Since the rise of this industry, there has been an enormous rise in criminal activity with related this to this field. This is a problem addressing a service that is a, a, a basic necessity a service for people of the state. It's an absolutely necessary service. It's a service that we have to work to ensure safety within. And this bill has not only employee protections, but consumer protections as well. And I, I ask for your support today. Thank you, Senator Way. So we have a big agenda today, so we can limit our comments. I would appreciate yes. it. Witnesses uh, support. Mr. Chairman and members, Barry Broad on behalf of the Teamsters. Um, obviously, we've been around transportation regulation forever. And the history of transportation regulation is that when we got criminal background checks in the trucking industry, Drivers who couldn't pass those criminal background checks moved to areas of driving where they didn't have criminal background checks. Same with drug and alcohol testing. Eventually, we had the whole thing that happened with school bus and school employees having to have criminal background checks because of issues that happened in the schools. So those drivers can't work there, so they work someplace else. The people go where there's work. You can't blame them for that. But there are certain people with certain criminal backgrounds that are inappropriate to drive people around. For example, and I, let's leave Uber and Lyft alone for a minute. There's a company called Shuttle now. It intends to be in the school bus space. It's hauling children around taking them to school. Somehow the parents think this is the same thing as the school bus, except there's no criminal background check required. And there isn't the same check of the vehicle. This is not anti-competitive. This is basic public safety we're talking about. And a driver, a person is a person is a person. Regardless of whether a computer app on your phone dispatches them to drive a vehicle or somebody calls them on the phone or they answer an ad and work for a regular employer, whatever they are, they're a person with the same human flaws as any other person. And if we feel in one mode we need to protect people, then it should apply across the board so that the public is equally protected no matter what mode of transportation they take. This is a really good bill and it's really necessary and we urge an I vote. Thank you. Other witnesses in support? Mr. Chair, members, Greg Cook representing the Greater California Livery Association, the representative group of California's limousine operators. Our number one mission is the res and responsibility is the safe public transportation. This bill is a major step in that direction. Transportation network companies are state sanctioned and should be regulated public transportation services. As such, we believe the legislature and the CPUC should prohibit passenger discrimination and discriminatory pricing, assure adequate driver, passenger, driver, passenger, and public insurance, require criminal background checks. We prefer the Department of Justice life scan test and allow for local law enforcement to adequately enforce laws and regulations through the impoundment of vehicles. We urge your I vote on this bill. The witnesses in support? Mr. Chair, members, Sarah Flox from the California Labor Federation. We are also in support. This is a modest bill. It addresses some of the gaps in regulatory oversight of TNCs. And most importantly, it gives the PUC help in enforcing their existing regulations. And regulations are only as good as the enforcement, and this is an important first step towards that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members, Josh Pana, on behalf of the California Bus Association, we urge your I vote on this bill and applaud the Senator's long, hard work on this. Thank you. I'm Barry Klungel with the San Francisco Taxi Workers Alliance. We also support this bill and feel it's very necessary. TNCs essentially provide the same services as taxis, liveries, and shuttle services. So the same issues such as public safety, congestion, consumer protection, fair labor, and business practices arise and require regulations for the same reasons. Unfortunately, rather than addressing these issues, laws concerning TNCs have to date uh, been molded to not disturb the their business models rather than for these issues. Um, this is a, a modest proposal and it doesn't require anything that taxi cabs and other uh, 
providers of the transportation for hire are required to do. We'd also like this bill to include provisions for data collection for an environmental impact report because uh, 37,000 TNC drivers were just identified in San Francisco alone, and um, as Senator Wessel just, just mentioned, there's 180,000 of these drivers in California. So other witnesses in support? Other supporters, please. Uh, please come forward if you're an opponent. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Chair, Chair, hello, there you go. Uh, members of the committee, thank you. Robert Callahan uh, with the Internet uh, Association uh, here in opposition, uh, opposition regretfully. Um, the description that we've heard today of uh, the ride-sharing industry in a way I think belies the reality on the ground. Um, if there is a associated enormous rise in criminal activity and lack of public safety, then why are consumers and drivers flocking to ride sharing in such such large numbers. I think one of the main reasons is for the very reason they've Im uh, uh, implemented technology enabled uh, safety measures, which other transportation uh, industry sectors have not implemented yet, um, including two way accountability, including GPS tracking, including um, other, other features which improve the quality and safety of rides. And, and we have not to this point demanded that other industries uh, implement the exact same features. Um, I think it's something that sets us apart. That being said, um, we have numerous concerns with the bill. Um, first and foremost, uh, we, we do appreciate um, the analysis and some of the observations um, about uh, some of the specific provisions. We do not think the constitutional um, restatement is in fact just a restatement of existing constitutional authority. We think it makes um, it's a very bad policy and sets a very concerning signal to this industry to explicitly state that the PUC should consider or has the authority to fix prices for transportation network company services. These are not monopolies. These are competitive markets. Um, consumers have enormous choice of how they want to get around, whether it's TNCs, whether it's shuttles, whether it's uh, trains, et cetera. Um, so we don't think that's appropriate. Also jeopardizes the business model, including some of the very important uh, uh, innovations that are coming to fruition, including carpooling and other things that this committee finds important in the transportation uh, arena. Include, please. Um, and then the final the final point, I'll, before I pass it over, is the data sharing mandate is not insignificant. While the PUC may have authority to ask for particular types of data from the company, this is any and all data and from an internet company and internet uh, enabled technology perspective, these are robust, uh, they have robust amounts of user data which uh, can't be jeopardized uh, or would not be appropriate to just turn over at the behest of the PUC uh, to turn over to local governments. So we'll stop there, but we'll urge your no vote. Yes. Mr. Chair, member of the committee, uh, members of the committee, John Doherty on behalf of TechNet. Uh, everyone by now is familiar with the way uh, these uh, network companies have remade the transportation industry uh, to expand access beyond the large urban centers and into underserved areas across the state like suburban San Diego, Los Angeles, the Inland Empire, the Central Valley, and at the same time provide a significant economic opportunity for drivers. Despite these successes, we've seen quite a few bills designed to look backwards. Um, this bill, unfortunately, is one of those that try to force TNCs into a model that has already been uh, proven to be too burdensome, limited, and unable to meet consumer demand at affordable levels. The industry is already regulated by the PC, and it's done so in a way that protects the public while maintaining this popular service. To the extent that the bill is reasserting existing authority of the PUC, we believe the bill is unnecessary. To the extent that it is giving guidance to the PUC, we believe it is giving inappropriate directions. 
Um, just three quick points here. We really, we do not believe that fixing rates um, uh, within the TNC industry is a recipe for success and continuing this tremendous service. Uh, we're also concerned uh, about the phrasing of 5446A, um, which Mr. Callahan has already identified, which is a very expansive way to look at the, the ability to capture data uh, about consumers. And finally, we do not believe that it's smart for the legislature to limit the ability of the PUC to look holistically at the required background level checks um, uh, because of the right now the way that 5445C is stated, it says that any um, uh, thing that is, uh, anything that is found to in any way enhance public safety should be adopted and must be adopted. So for those reasons, we respectfully ask for your no vote. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the Senate Transportation uh, and Housing Committee. My name is Laura Bassesto. I'm here on behalf of Lyft. Uh, we echo TechNet and the Internet Association's um, statements in opposition for this bill, including their letter that they've uh, sent forward. And I'd like to highlight one point they made. This bill would eliminate our carpooling options like LiftLine by removing flexible pricing. We are very much opposed to this as it would halt services that may reduce traffic congestion and greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members, Jeremy Murs on behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce, we would associate our comments with Mr. Callahan and uh, Mr. Doherty, highlighting the, the two points about the information sharing by the PUC um, and additionally um, some concerning potentially price setting issues. So um, with that, we would urge a no vote. Thank you. Uh, other witnesses opposed, please. Uh, Mr. Hello. Chairman. Yeah. Chairman, members, Will Gonzalez on behalf of Uber Technologies. We're strong opposition. Just note, Uber's performing over a million rides a week in California. We think if there was a public safety concern, uh, your offices would probably be the first to hear, hear, hear about it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Susan Matier. I'm a Lyft driver and I oppose this bill. Good afternoon. My name is Susan McLaughlin and I've been driving for Lyft since September of last year. I've had the ability to transport those that were handicapped via wheelchair, via guide dogs. I have had the ability to transport people that were outside of public transportation via bus, um, BART, other public transit, including places that cab drivers just simply wouldn't go pick them up. There is definitely a need for Lyft and for Uber to get out there to provide public transportation. Um, the fact that I can now ride into the Bay Area and I can carpool with others saves gas, saves emissions, <laughs> saves money, saves tolls, and it also cuts down on an over-congested area as it is. Um, I'm not opposed to being fingerprinted because I've been fingerprinted in the past, but I am opposed to my information being put out to a public entity. I would not want you guys getting my credit card information, my bank statements, and those things as well. Um, and, and also, I mean, I really oppose the fact that at any given time somebody can say your card can get impounded for a reason that they feel is potentially justified. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, members. Jason Bryan on behalf of Travelers United. We are also in opposition. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have questions from a committee members. Any questions? Senator Roth, please. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Why? Uh, why would we want the PUC to fix rates as a, as a state entity with respect to this form of transportation? It's my understanding that taxis, for example, are in that regard are regulated locally by local jurisdictions. And so a local jurisdiction would be able to take into account various factors that might be unique to that particular geographic area or municipality? Right, first of all, this is an essential service. And for local governments, the way they allow a business to stay in business is by allowing them to charge a rate that it will do two things, allow them to stay in business, number two, protect the driver so the driver makes a living. So they actually put a price minimum because the market usually, uh, when, when you have no price minimum, you have what's happening right now in the industry, a, a predatory pricing model that that is, is what's used to create competitions. Whenever you, you let any uh, big business in an essential service, allow, allow them to use predatory pricing, you, you create a monopoly. 
this industry, it's, it's very appropriate that they lobbied very hard, worked very hard to be uh, 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 regulated by the PUC, very appropriate, in this way. It, they're not currently a monopoly, but, but when they will, one, they have a model that is a monopolistic model. One day they will be a monopoly. And, and that's, that's a fact, you heard it here first, and, and that, will, that will come to fruition very soon. It's already happening, you're seeing uh, taxi cabs uh, 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 filing for bankruptcy, you have others uh, uh, reducing their operations, uh, it's just gonna happen. But how do you create protections? Let me give you an example that happened recently in San Francisco. The NFL partnered with Uber and said Uber is the company of choice and we're gonna establish a relationship with them. So when the people went to the, to the stadium, said they announced to their drivers, guess what? Uber is the only uh, transportation company providing transportation to our uh, Super Bowl customers. You had drivers come from all over California to flood the market. There were so many drivers that with their price adjustment tool, their formula, rates went down to 10 cents a mile. So if you can imagine if an average rate is about $1.70 a mile and, and drivers are still finding it hard to make a living, uh, in this industry for that day it went 10 cents a mile. So when you think of the economic, economic impact of all these drivers fl flooding San Francisco, thousands of drivers that weren't there flooding the market so that it reduced the price to 10 cents, you have all these emissions that you wouldn't have had if you had some kind of uh, uh, control in terms of who can locate geographically. So you had a huge economic impact, uh, I'm sorry, a huge environmental impact in all these emis unnecessary emissions. Number two, you had rates dropping to 10 cents a mile so none of those drivers not one made a profit that weekend working, and that's unfair to the drivers. It's unfair for the San Francisco community that experienced a, a, a enormous gridlock, but also going back to uh, providing some kind of reasonable requirement that your, your local jurisdiction is gonna have uh, transportation. This state is not equal everywhere. You have some communities that are very small. San Francisco is different from, from, I would argue, El Centro in my district, where they have it, it's very hard to keep one or two taxis on, in business to service a population of 50,000 people or 15,000 people. So they, they try to establish a rate so that it allows them to stay in business and allow that essential service to their customer base, but also keeps them in operation and, and provides some kind of reasonable ability for the drivers to make uh, a living. So if, if this legislature fails to authorize the PUC to fix rates, does that mean that local jurisdictions for, for uh, TNCs, does that mean that local jurisdictions would have the authority to to um, to set a rate structure for the TNCs within Apparently, the jurisdictions? Currently, local authorities don't regulate this industry. Is that they're, by choice? They're, they're, they're regulated by the P. Well, this legislature voted to have the PUC regulate them. You had certain local governments seeking to regulate them. The industry lobbied to be voted for, by, uh, to be regulated by the PUC, and their their strategy is not to be regulated by local governments. There are other local governments that are finding ways to help protect their markets and pr protect uh, access to these services by looking at other ways to do it. But uh, so far in, in pricing, I haven't heard of anything nationally that would, would uh, get people involved in pricing. Well, Mr. Chair, I mean, the reason I'm confused is our staff analysis says this bill, one, authorizes the CPUC to fix rates. So that suggests to me that whatever we did before doesn't give them, the entity, the authority to fix rates. Well, it's in their constitution. We're simply uh, asking them to pretty much exercise an ability they already have. They have that ability for all the, all the uh, 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 
all the services that they uh, regulate with re regard to transportation, it's already in the code. So, I mean, this is a, 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 a support of that for them to actually exercise their responsibility. The, the PUC has a responsibility to do a lot of things and it's already in code. And we're simply uh, weighing in as a legislature saying, yes, protect the drivers, protect the public. We don't, we don't like the, the idea that one, you may, at one hour you take a ride uh, to, let's say, uh, dinner, and you pay $6, and on the ride home, you, you are using the same service, they're charging you $60. It's, uh, it's semantics, then. It says authorized, but it should mean direct. We're directing the PUC to fix rates. Yes. And okay. I, I just, well, okay. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Let me um, let me suggest that we need still working on the uh, issue of uh, accessibility. Um, mm -hmm. That's got to be worked out because you know it's a federal law that you have you know transportation be accessible. And I think we had our uh, special hearing. There was an indication that that would be acceptable, some kind of accessibility standard for the disabled. So I think that we have to still work on that. Uh, uh, I also think that uh, we have to still work on the um, um, process for background checks. And as you know, there's many different levels of background checks that can be done uh, in terms of uh, the employees. And uh, if we're going to require the PUC to study um, the Department of Justice, there's other more simple processes that can be done for background checks, I think, you know, that normal businesses do, like if you're hiring somebody, you do a background check on a person, you know, so um, I think um, we have to cross that, that bridge still. So those are the two issues that I suggest that we need to work on, Mr. Ch Mr. Uh, Wisso, and um, if that can be understood, I think those issues, what other issues do we have? Uh, Senator Allen, question. Those are my two. I mean, I, I see those two as need a little work, you know, kind of maybe you want to work with us on those those issues. Senator Allen. So, I, you know, unfortunately, I, I literally am here from the Elections Committee, so I have oh. missed the discussion. Oh. I apologize. Um, I'm chair down there. Um, so I, you know, I have a couple of my core concerns, I think, with the bill, and there's a lot of things in here that the analysis rightly points out just simply codifies existing right. law, and I don't understand why people are opposing that. But I, I do think that um, my, my sense is on the rate regulation piece, it's just we're going in the wrong direction. I, mean, I think we've kind of realized in the context of all of the market changes that have happened that if anything, uh, we need to be loosening up rate regulation rather than the other way around. And the taxis are absolutely in an unfair position right now. And the answer to that is to work on helping to, you know, help the taxis out, um, as opposed to doubling down on a on a on a increasingly broken policy. The other thing is, I, I just can't. I, I'm going to have trouble supporting anything that limits carpooling. Um, so those are some of my concerns about the current version of the bill. I see you shaking your head. So. I'd love but to. The bill doesn't limit carpooling. How does it limit carpooling? <clears throat> That's a good question. I'll find out and I will, uh, I will, uh, I, you know, I mean, my understanding is, is that, that if you're, let me get some clarification for you. Senator, let me get some clarification for you. Senator, I'd yes. be happy to, so, uh, oh, the, no. unless you. Well, I would love to hear from the, the, you like to have, if you you've got like clarification. To have. I'd like to ask you if you have a comment on the carpooling. Right. So, so the explicit, and I apologize, I've just literally run in from another committee. It's no problem. Uh, so the explicit um, sort of granting of authority to fix rates on transportation network companies assumes that perhaps at some point those rates and prices may be set, and that um, does not work with dynamic How does it assume for, that? You got it. Come on. Come on. So, How does it assume that? So, so if so, certainly it would be it would be bad policy for the state of California in 2016 to explicitly. Uh, explicitly tell the PUC that they can fix rates on a dynamic competitive industry. Even if they but, can do it already? So the, the current constitutional authority to fix rate for tra transportation is best that I could find was from 1946 was the most recent amendment and I don't think, you know, 80 years later it would make sense to explicitly call that out. All right. I'll say um, that. Senator, Senator Bates, you have a question, right? Please. Excuse me. That's 
Senator Bates, you have, you, your mic isn't working? No, I got it now. Actually, I there believe that Senator Allen uh, raised one of my questions is mm -hmm. where is it fair to be regulated? And when you have local governments who are now deregulating or approaching deregulation of ta the taxi industry to now give uh, permission to or authority to or direction to CPUC to regulate this industry, you know, now we have another uh, imbalance in, in uh, what is a fair uh, playing field out there. So I, I think this is really kind of premature. If you have the taxi industry deregulated at the local level so that there's more competition, haven't we found the best of all possible worlds? Rather than creating now a, a whole different level for TNCs, and local governments are responding to what is clearly unfair at the moment of what's happened to taxis with this, yeah. you know, uh, many, many levels of regulation and differently in different communities. So for that reason, I wouldn't be able to support this. I do have, I, I feel that what's happened to our taxi industry has truly been unfair and looking for a solution to that. This doesn't strike me as the solution. Okay, um, Senator, uh, I don't see any other questions. Do you want to close, please? You have the, the floor to close. Yes. Uh, first of all, it's important to protect the public. Okay. People are being hurt, and there are incidents that are happening that could have been avoided. And you have an industry saying they're already doing background checks, and we have evidence to suggest that they're not. So how do you hold somebody accountable? They're talking about accountability, Yet we have 11,987 complaints of sexual assault and rape, <coughs> and, and they're talking about accountability, but what did the industry do to respond to those victims? What was their measure to respond? I, my guess is zero. Why? Because they're riding a wave of popularity. That's all this is. It is a very popular service that's making claims that they're doing it better because they're allowed to operate under a, monopoli a monopolistic business scheme. Now, it's not our job to create a climate, an economic climate in our state that's going to contribute to creating a monopoly. So they, they say they can't support this bill because it does things that they're already doing and because they're going to be required to do things that they're already doing, that's going to put them out of business. That is, you know, how, how I mean, they're, they're just inventing a reason to, to oppose this legislation. Why? Because there are concerns that the PUC may take measures to hold them accountable. Right now, the public has no way, absolutely zero way to verify any of the information that's being put out by this industry. As, you know, they're settling lawsuits left and right just simply on the issue of claims that they're making to the public. They can no longer make those claims. But what this legislature can also do is stand by this company and saying what they're doing is is right and what they're doing is providing a safe environment for the, the constituents of our state. This bill does by no means level the playing field with the taxi industry. That, that train is gone, long gone. Whatever regulation this state makes in this area would probably be unenforceable and that's another issue that we need to address. But the PUC has a responsibility to go out there and create a an environment for those drivers to make a living. You, uh, Senator Allen, you talked about price fixing. Why would we do that? I, uh, we had a Senator Roth ask that very question. I'm sorry you missed it. And I, I need to explain it to you because it's very important for the public's protection that you don't have rates going up to, uh, if somebody goes to a restaurant and pays $6 for the ride and then on the way home, uh, because demand increased, they're paying $60 for that same ride. That's unfair to the consumer. But what is also unfair is a driver going out there into the market trying to make a living and the price drops to 10 cents a mile. You can't make a living on 10 cents a mile. And my, my uh, belief is that if you have a 180,000 cars on the market all at once necessitating a rate of 10 cents. That's not good for those drivers. 
those drivers need to be protected. They need to make a livable wage. So they need, they definitely need a floor. 10 cents is not a, a, a wage that any of us should stand by here in this legislature. And, and currently that's what the PUC is standing beside. So I think this is a very reasonable bill. I think opposing it today will send the wrong message to the public, wrong message to the PUC saying, we want to encourage a monopolistic business plan to succeed in our state. Mind you, we don't regulate the taxis, and I don't believe. I, this, the cities currently have all the power to create rules to taxis to make them more competitive, but we have 100 years of experience with this transportation industry that suggests that the drivers need protection, and the public needs protection. And, and those are, that's a hundred years of, of experience that we can't turn our back on just because it's, it's, it's not a, a politically influential industry. Because they're not organized, because they're di separated in different, every single local government, and this is a local government issue, if you believe in in, in a localizing decisions, let the local governments decide how to best serve their transportation needs. And unfortunately, that, that train has left, it's gone, it's gone. We, we, uh, we can't do anything about that to a certain extent, but what we can do is provide basic, very basic, this is a reasonable bill. This is not even asking for what we really should be asking for. The, de the public deserves more. We deserve to do more for them. I've been working on this for a long time. I'm telling you, I thought I brought, I'd, I'd bring, I understand how, how influential this industry is. I understand how much support there is for this industry in this, by this legislature. That's why I brought a bill I thought that nobody could oppose and nobody should oppose because it involves protecting people that are currently being hurt, and by turning our backs on them, we're contributing to their victimization, and the blood is gonna be on our hands. I hope you can support this, and allow me to continue to work with the industry and on this issue for the benefit of the people of California. Okay, um, I'd like to ask, uh, yes, Senator, thank you. Uh, is there a motion on this bill? Um, Okay, there's a motion. Um, let's have uh, any further discussion. Uh, Senator, Senator, um, um, I, I favor the bill. However, I want to work on the accessibility issue for the disabled. And um, I think the background checks could be, we could develop a pretty simple streamlined process for background checks. Um, with, the, with that commitment, I would support, Thank support you. the bill. Um, Call the roll, please. The motion is do pass and re-refer to the Committee on Appropriations. Senators Bell? Aye. Bell, aye. Canella? No. Canella, no. Allen? Bates? No. Bates, no. Gaines? Galjani? Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. McGuire? Mendoza? Roth? Wachowski? It's 2-2, two, two, and we'll wait for the other senators to vote. Senator, thank you. Thank you. 